40 years ago, IVF was invented. Millions of people today exist that wouldn't have existed otherwise. Every year, IVF got better, the success rates got better, the number of embryos that were produced per cycle got better and better. I think ORCID is this really big inflection point where you can make your own lot. You can actually use all the information and make the best decision given the data that we have today. I first got interested in this because of my mom. She has a condition called retinitis pigmentosa. So it's a degenerative condition where you progressively lose your vision over multiple years. I think just even from a super young age, I just felt that it was incredibly unfair. Like, why did she get unlucky? Why did she get this typo? Why did it affect her or not her siblings, not us, her kids? I think that was just the motivation that got me excited about working and this idea that what if we could give parents this superpower that they never had before? What if instead of rolling the dice and kind of getting unlucky like my mom did, parents had the opportunity to mitigate risk for every known condition. So basically, in short, what happens is that the woman is on hormones for two weeks. And then at the end of that two weeks, she comes here, she's under anesthesia. Basically, the woman would be here. It's about 15 minutes, right? Depends on how much egg they have. Once we get fluid, we pass it into the andrologist. I'm looking through the microscope for any, they're called COCs. Once I find one, I place it into our holding dish. The speed and precision that she's doing this basically determines the success of the entire process. It takes really special hands and a special eye to be able to, to do this. So now that I've uh, collected all of the eggs, I'm going to place them in the pass-through. So right now, Shelman has picked up the sperm and she's guiding the needle through the zona, which is the shell. Now she's breaking the membrane. Now she's placing the sperm into the center of the egg. That hopefully should become an embryo. So this is five days after the egg was inseminated via ICSI. So it's grown in culture, and so now it's ready for biopsy. She's gonna use a laser to ping some of the cells to kind of break it apart. We're aiming for about three to five cells. After that, the parrots, they spit in a tube. Orchid confirms genetically that yes, mom is mom and dad is dad. So now that she's prepared the samples, she shifts them back to uh, Orchid's lab and we do the rest. As you saw, the whole IVF process, it's pretty intense. The most heartbreaking thing that could possibly happen is that a child has a really severe condition, has a birth defect, has a skeletal defect, has a neurodevelopmental disorder. What ORCID does is we're the first company in the world to be able to sequence the entire genome of an embryo. Other companies or other alternatives only look at less than 1% of the DNA in an embryo with those five cells that we saw. So ORCID takes the exact same number of cells and is able to get 100 times the amount of data. You're able to mitigate risk for many more conditions that were previously impossible to detect in embryos. So basically the way that parents work with us, they will go to an IVF center, like the one that we're in right now. They'll say that they want whole genome screening. They want the most advanced genetic reports for their embryos. So that embryo grows to day zero to day five. At day five, it's about 120 cells. The embryologists take four to five of those cells. They send it to our lab. It's analyzed. We're able to get that 100 times that whole genome data off of that embryo. Then the parents and their physician get much more information. They get information about neurodevelopment developmental disorders, birth defects, pediatric and hereditary cancers, complex conditions, meaning conditions where it's not just a single gene, but dozens, hundreds, to millions of genes that contribute risk. So all of that information is consolidated so that parents have the most information when they go to choose which embryo to transfer. What we had before was you're essentially choosing embryos randomly. There's so many people that have been sequenced, so much information that we have about genetics, which typos can lead to which diseases. For the first time ever, parents can make sure that the genetics of their child aren't working against so the beginning of the ORCID started with a class that I was teaching at Stanford. So it was called Frontiers of Reproductive Technology. Basically, I got to work with the IVF lab director there. His name is Dr. Barry Bear. He runs an IVF lab just like the one that you're looking at today. So he was really critical in helping us basically get a lot of embryo, different types of anomalies, genetic anomalies to start testing. We started with the software side and then once we started building more confidence around that. Then we worked with cell lines. So then we started moving to research embryos. Then we got CLIA and CAP. So these are the certifications for labs. Then we started accepting samples from centers like when we're, we're in here. We're really lucky we get to stand on the shoulders of giants, right? Billions of dollars have been put into single cell sequencing. Geneticists have poured over these databases, classified these variants for us. But basically just being able to get that high quality data off of embryos, everything from the chemistry to the bioinformatics to the variant analysis, building that entire experience so that parents 
and their doctors can benefit from this data rather than being overwhelmed from the data was just like a massive undertaking. I'm super proud of this team and I'm super proud that we were able to make sci-fi real. The actual process of getting there was just a huge grind. Hundreds and hundreds of iterations and every single iteration on the chemistry leads to changes on the software side, on the bioinformatics side, and just constantly fine tuning that over years so that now we can have that, that clinical grade multi you know, that holy grail that um, everyone's been waiting for. The next milestone is gonna be, let's have a, a healthy baby. Let's show that the genome of the baby matches the genome that we sequenced at that super early from those fine cells. Do those genetics match? And basically getting it, making it available to everyone, right? We want to make it so that every family can have a healthy baby. For anyone who's had a personal experience, whether it's them themselves, a parent or a sibling, they don't want to see their kids suffer in that same way. For two decades, we've been making sequencing cheaper. We've been aggregating these genetic data sets. We can use that data now to say, these are the specific typos or these are the specific variants that are harmful. Make it so that for future generations, for parents who want to have a healthy baby, they have the maximum chance of being able to do that. Our mission is to extend the health span of the next generation and to make it so that everyone who wants to have a healthy baby has the best chance of doing that and a, and a healthy child and a healthy adulthood. Thanks for watching the 23rd episode of S3 on the 24th of December, the eve of Christmas. And I just personally want to say for myself to you, I hope you have a very merry Mercury sponsorship. This episode is sponsored by Mercury, the best way to manage your finances if you're a founder. I use Mercury myself and it is phenomenal. As I said before, I have a high bar for sponsorships on S3 and Mercury is simply fantastic. To start, it only takes 10 minutes to onboard to the platform and you don't even have to talk to a human. Mercury was built for founders and startups. That's why they're sponsoring S3. I do all the work to make sure S3 happens every every week on nights and weekends, and it's companies like Mercury that make it possible and really motivating for us to improve the quality of the show. So as we wrap out our last sponsorship of the year with Mercury, I wanna give a final huge thank you to them and a sincere recommendation that you check out the platform. As I said before, I use them myself and I really think they're fantastic. So if you're looking for a better way to manage your finances, you should consider Mercury. This episode was a truly like kind of last minute in the spirit of S3 episode. I know we just did a bunch of biotech companies with our, our previous biotech blackout in partnership with Pillar. So I was like planning on taking a break from biotech companies for a while. But what Orchid is doing is so cool. And for secret reasons for now, I felt like it was really important to feature Orchid as soon as we could. Little known fact, I myself was an IVF baby. My parents were kind of early pioneers as the embryologists we film with put it in doing IVF. They, you know, I mean, a test tube and here I am today. So I kind of personally think this stuff is cool, but I think it's even cooler now that we have a point at which we can give parents and doctors the ability to make decisions to increase the chances of a, of a healthy and happy life for, for their kids. It's, that's like really, really amazing stuff. And I think a key point of technology just being amazing and unlocking more for our species. That's all for this week and this year. We've been doing S3 for 23, 24 weeks since the original idea, almost halfway from my, my goal of, of doing S3 for a year. I'm pumped about that. My goal with the show is to inspire more people to build technology to change the world. And uh, it's just, it's such an honor and a blessing to get to cover so many awesome companies going and working to change the world. So yeah, here we are, end of 2023, almost halfway through a first year of, of S3. I hope you have a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and we'll see you in 2024. Until then, keep on building the future.